Hi everyone, welcome back to Cotto Verdi. My name's Annette and I'm back with another video about a delivery I've had and this time it's bare rooted perennials. Now, um, I know that when I first started um, gardening, the idea of somebody sending me a bare root plant was scary and also just weird. I kind of wondered how on earth it would survive. And so I wanted to make a video to show people what came and why it's okay to receive and plant bare rooted perennials and shrubs um, at this time of year, in fact, all through the winter season. And the main reason that it's okay is because they're dormant. So they don't have any leafy, leafy growth. Um, so with perennials, that is a plant that will die right back down to soil level during the winter. Um, you may find that the plant still has structure above the soil, but you can cut it down. I choose not to, and many people choose not to, because you can leave seed heads and things like that for the birds and the insects. Um, they feed on them and they nest in them through the winter. So actually it's good to leave some of that growth, but the plant itself is literally just a root. That's the only part of it, that, the only part of it that's living during the winter months. And it's very easy to dig up perennial at that time of year and move it. And it's also easy for suppliers to dig them up and send them out to customers. If you don't know what bare rooted perennials are, they are literally perennials that the supplier sends out without any soil or compost or pots. They literally just send the roots. So the reason that suppliers send out bare root perennials and we as consumers or plantsmen buy them is because um, it's more environmentally friendly that way. It's easier for the nursery and it's more economical for us because they are not having to supply the compost and the pots and therefore making their packages larger. They can reduce the size of the packages they send out and the weight of them by not having to send out compost or pots. So this is something that's been going on for a very long time because it's cheaper for us to buy them because we're not having to pay for the pots and the compost and the extra weight and bulk of the carriage. The most important thing to do when the berry perennials arrive is to get them into some water. So you basically take them out of whatever packaging they're in. Mine are in plastic bags, which I think has helped to seal in some of the moisture. So you take them out of the plastic and you put them in a bucket or a bowl or anything, a container of water, and you let them sit there. I would say for 15 to 15 minutes to half an hour, um, but I've seen on some websites, they say to do it for three to six hours. I'm not sure that's strictly necessary, especially if you are then going to either put them into the ground or put them onto pots. So I soak them in the water and that way they're able to drink up a whole load of moisture to revive themselves. If you don't do that, I think you risk losing your plants because they won't be able to absorb the moisture from the soil as easily. There just won't be as much available. You can plant these hardy perennials straight out into the garden, but I think that it's better to put them into a pot first, a container. My advice, is to get them into soil as soon as you possibly can. It is tipping it down today. I mean, literally pouring with rain. So I am not going to be going out. I don't have a greenhouse. I have no intention of going out in the rain and putting these in soil. So what I will do is I will dunk all of these into water. Now, when you've potted these up into containers and you put them outside, they don't need any special treatment. You can literally just put them in a sheltered spot, like up against a wall, make sure it's nice and sunny, make sure that if it doesn't rain that you water them on regularly. I would check them at least once a week, especially as it gets warmer. But you'll see that they start growing and they start becoming the kind of plant that you want to put in a bed. And when you see that it's doing that, you know that it's got a robust root system and that it's ready to go out into your beds and you can just plant away. So moving on, I'm going to show you what I've chosen. And I'll also show you what the bare roots look like so that you're not terrified when yours arrive and think that someone sent you a bit of rubbish from their compost heap and you know, something dead. So this is a Sangrosorba obtusa. Um, it doesn't actually say anything else on this packet apart from that the, there are five in there 
and they, you know, they look like they're just something that's dead, but they're not. So um, let me explain to you. I don't know whether it's going to focus on the plant and not my face, but this is last year's stem. So this is dead and you would cut it off to ground level. So this is the important bit here. And actually I think what's happened is they looking at this, it's just one plant that's been divided, but this is perfectly viable. It's still slightly damp, even though these bits might not be, this bit is still damp, but they'll come in like all different shapes and sizes. This one's even bigger. So these are, okay falling on the ground these are all roots and this one actually doesn't have the stem so this is the stem but these stems have been cut off uh, which is fine it's absolutely fine so in the ground your plant is under the soil like this so it looks like nothing and then all of this needs to go in water get rehydrated and then it will get planted up so you can also see here the variety of sizes that you'll get. Both of these are one of the five um, the sangrasorbas that I've ordered. So on to the next one. This is a Strantia Moulin Rouge. And I'll show you that all these roots look different. These are sort of impacted a bit of soil. And this is what the Strantia root looks like. That's clearly the top, goes under the soil this way. Here I've got Aruncus dioicus. I don't know how you say that. These roots are long and dangly. This is clearly the top. I can see shoots already. So can you see why they need to go in the soil? And it's a long dangly root. So make sure when you're putting them in pots that you put them in pots that are big enough. So this poppy is called Papaba. It's an oriental poppy and it's called Ruffled Patty. And I see lots of shoots of it already. So it's really important that you get these into water and into soil as quickly as you possibly can. All of these, by the way, perennials, these will shoot up no problem. You will have plants and flowers in the first year from bare-rooted perennials. This is a Veronicastrum cupid. I think it's purple, if I remember rightly. I'll put it up on the screen. Again, this is what it looks like. You can see that it's got a shoot already and then a big sort of root ball thing. And then I have an Astilby Vision in purple. So I'll put, I'll put everything, I'll put a picture up on the screen. Hopefully it's popping up as you're watching this. Gosh, so this is obviously a hardy perennial that has been, the massive root has been chopped and then I've got a chunk of it and that is perfectly viable. This will grow. So it's just like with, you know, any plant, you can divide it, any plant, most plants. Um, definitely hardy perennials, you can divide them just by chopping the root ball. This is a still be honky tonk. Actually, I think it's pink, I can't remember. Oh, I should have it on here. Yes, it's pink. This is Phlox Sherbet Cocktail, I think it's like, green and pink and white oh and it's got shoots already can you see i've got shoots shooting up so i mean you know i think when i first started gardening if i'd got something like this i wouldn't have known what to do with it i wouldn't have known which way was up i mean you can actually plant it like this i should think because i can see a shoot coming from this part here and it will obviously shoot from this bit, which is where the old stem is, but I reckon I could lie down like this and it will produce a bigger plant. This one is just white, and I bought 10 of these because I really like them for flower arranging. So I've got more than just the five in here. A bit greedy of me, but I wanted some for the garden and then some that I could cut. So can you see the shoots on this? This is, this is the red phlox. So this is the red phlox. Last but not least, looks the same as the others. In fact, this one's the driest. That's going in the water first. We're in my kitchen again today. We have got yet another storm. We have Storm Franklin hitting us today. And I have just got to get these bare root perennials into some pots. And so I've got to do it in the kitchen, which is not making my husband very happy, but you know, 
we can clean up mess. So I'm going to use these one litre pots, they are black plastic, I have reused them and reused them for years and they were actually free to me because an old plant farm was getting rid of them and I was like I'll have those, most of them hadn't even been used. So fortunately they didn't go into landfill when that farm closed down and I've managed to snag them and they're just really robust and I just reuse them every year. So these are one litre pots, I'm using the same compost that I always use which is the Melcourt Silver Grow peat free compost that is RHS approved. I really like it, it's an absolutely lovely texture. You can see that Richard has half filled these pots for me to save time because my shoulder hurts etc etc and I've got a trug here full of compost that I just will top it up with. So I'm just going to get started and just pick one of these bags each bag's got five bare roots in and they've been sitting in water and then I just bagged them up. I've written my tags. These are the Aruncus dioicus. So I'm just literally, I mean look at these beautiful things. Um, can you see that they're sprouting already? So I'm just going to spread the roots out in this pot. So I've made a really nice deep well and I'm going to spread the roots out and then kind of push it down a little bit. So I want to bring the soil up to this level. In fact, I'm going to take a bit of soil out of there. And I'm literally just going to fill it around with soil. I haven't mixed it with any grit or anything like that. And so I'm going to bring it up to the level where, can you see that that's still too low? You can still see some roots. And so I'm going to put some more in there. And I'm not um, pressing it down particularly hard or anything like that. I don't, want to do, I don't want to compact the soil. It's not soil, compost. So there we go. Now I feel that the roots are covered now and there's just a tiny bit of green growth showing. So I'm, this is where I'm going to fill it up to sort of where the white is. And can we not go in the tray, darling? Come on, how'd you come? So you do want to make sure all the roots are covered. As I said, I'm not pressing it down particularly around anywhere. I don't want to squash it or stifle them. And then you stick the label in. <laughs> Can't do anything with cats. Or oh, kittens.
that's it for today. I hope you found it interesting and useful. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If you've enjoyed this video, do subscribe to my channel. It really helps me and I love connecting with everybody. So thank you so much for watching and I and Baloo will see you all next time. Baloo! makes it that makes it and that makes it why can't I talk today here I've got a rancus diosis Di I don't know how you say that here I've got Ryan here I've got I'm arrogating myself <laughs>